Hello everybody, this is Lara at pureelliotwave.com. Uh, my extra video today is going to be VE chain. I'm going to have a look at some Elliot, well I'm going to see if it fits Elliot wave structures and then I'm going to have a look at some classic analysis which I've prepared earlier. Same usual scenario. I am going to start my Elliot wave count from this low down here and I'm going to view this on a semi-log scale. When you view this like pretty much every cryptocurrency when you view it on an arithmetic scale you can see that it has this curved growth chart that's exponential growth so that's why I'm interested in these markets because exponential growth gives us whopping profits if we can buy low and sell high. It sounds great in theory but it's actually really hard to do in practice. I'm going to start my Elliott Wave count down here. This is the low week beginning 8th of March 2020. I don't know if this does look like a very good 5 wave impulse but then I'm also used to seeing impulses in cryptocurrencies that look like 3's and are actually 5's because the second wave is more time consuming than the fourth wave correction giving a 5 wave impulse a 3 wave look. So I want to see if that could be the case here. Hmm. And uh, cryptocurrencies will do that because they have a tendency similar to commodities to have more time consuming second waves and more brief and shallow fourth waves. And that's because the fifth waves to end a third wave impulse one degree higher are particularly swift and strong forcing the fourth wave that comes often just before and just after to be more brief and shallow than their counterpart second waves. Not always but it is a common tendency. I think I want to actually put this up here and then I want to see this an extended fifth wave. Does this fit? No not like that, like this. Is there an overlap here though? No. Oh yeah, they look actually look pretty good. All the subdivisions are now labelled nicely. And yeah, let's have it over here. And then this looks like it could be a complete correction. I'll also label this intermediate degree. And I'll worry about the bigger picture, which would be primary degree later. And question is C over. B looks like an obvious three. That meets all rules, that looks pretty good. Looks like A is a leading expanding diagonal. But is that going to meet all rules? Or is it leading contracting? Oh, it could be, let's see. Mm, yeah, it totally could. Trend lines aren't too bad. Let's have a look and see if it actually might fit better as a leading expander. I put this here and this here. Now I'm checking wavelengths. No, because four, uh, sorry, five is not longer than three. So no, this it doesn't meet rules. That looks actually okay. Okay. I'm going to save that and I'm going to have a go at a daily chart. And I'm going to have a look at the middle of the third wave. Oh, that's going to be no problem at all. I think, or is it? this here and this here. Oh no, here. Oh okay. I think I want to put this here and this here. I th okay, I think that's not too bad. Okay, the last question to answer is C over. Is the pullback over possibly? 
it could always continue lower as a double zigzag. Okay. If it's over here, where do I want to see two ending? I think I want to label this as a double zigzag. And I want to label this as an impulse, but is it going to work? So you can't have 3 and 4 over here because there's an overlap, and 4 is not allowed to overlap into one price territory, but I think going to see let's expand this out I think this could fit here yeah a brief shallow fourth wave and a more time consuming second wave and this curve to this impulse absolutely normal this curve absolutely normal I have no problem with brief shallow fourth waves to counterpart deeper and more time consuming second waves. Oh this last fifth wave actually looks really good. And there's a nice looking impulse in here. No, not like that. That. Probably there. Yeah. Okay. It totally could be over. Okay, bigger picture. A pullback could be over at this last low for VE chain. So, the bigger picture here, a primary degree. I would label, let's put this up here. One, two. So, early stages of a third wave. Let's just put that in here as well. Okay. The, I think there is enough volume in VE chain. As, as there does seem to be in most not all cryptocurrencies I've looked at for reasonable looking Elliott wave structures so if I do purchase some of this this could be part of my strategy for analysis let's have a look at some classic analysis now um, I am only going to be looking at looking at the whole price history of this I'm going to be looking from this high and this low I haven't gone back and looked at this low which should probably do to try and see how price behaved actually let's do that okay I just real quick prepared another chart I'm going to have a look at a daily chart level at how VE chain behaved around this low here in week beginning 15th of, or 8th of March 2020 let's have a look and see how classic analysis indicators behaved when price found that really important low. When we can look at this information and gather this information, it can help inform us as to whether or not the last low is sustainable, probably or unlikely. This is just an exercise in probability. None of this is certain. It just gives us an idea of what might be happening. Okay, so at this, here's the important low. There was a volume spike on this downward session. This is not a bullish candlestick pattern. There is quite a bullish long lower wick, but there's no bullish reversal pattern at this low. And then two sessions later, a strong shooting star. This is very bearish, but it only led to one day of a little pullback before price began its long, long march a lot higher. There was a bearish signal from on balance volume on this candlestick here. So on balance volume gave us indication. Here's a consolidation and the breakout happened a few days later but on balance volume here is telling us a downward breakout is likely to occur and that's exactly what happened a few days later so that would have been a fantastic bearish signal 
At the low, no on balance volume hasn't given a bullish signal. The downward trend didn't even reach extreme. It, at the end of this downward movement here, ADX was below the negative DX line and below 45. It's not even extreme, let alone very extreme. So RSI reached oversold but didn't exhibit bullish divergence. So this low would have been pretty hard to pick. So for a strong downward trend and to see a sustainable low for VE chain, we don't necessarily need to see ADX reaching very extreme. But if RSI reaches into oversold, that could be giving us a clue that a sustainable low is in or really close. There was weak bullish divergence between price and slow stochastics, but not between price and RSI. I would I give always more weight to bullish or bearish divergence between price and RSI than I do to price and stochastics. But if there's nothing in RSI, then you can have a look and see if it exists in stochastics, and it did at that low. ATR strongly increased down to the low and volume spiked at the low. So we've got a volume spike, RSI oversold, ADX not extreme. What have we got in the current situation at the daily chart level? Here we have the last major low. We've got RSI reached oversold and now we have some bullish divergence between these two lows. We didn't have that at that last very important major low we just looked at, but now we have it. How did ADX behave? It reached extreme. Not very extreme because it didn't reach above 45, but it is above both DX lines. It's increasing. The negative DX line is above the positive, so ADX tells us this downward trend did reach very extreme. So I think the probability here that this is a sustainable low for VE chain is actually quite reasonable. How's it behaving at the weekly chart level? So here's that low we just looked at at the daily chart level. We've looked at the prior one just a few candlesticks off to the left of the chart. We've looked at that one. We've looked at this one. This one looks like it could actually be quite likely a sustainable low. We've got some upward movement here with increased range and push from volume. But we saw that here. Here's a bullish candlestick pattern off this low. We see upward movement with push from volume, and yet the downward trend continued. What we don't see here, though, is this bullish candlestick pattern does not have support from volume. It's much weaker than the prior downward week. So off this low, there was no strength. Off this low, there was weakness. Strength did build in here, but I would want to see strength right at off the low. Do we see it down here? Here's the low. This might be a hammer candlestick. I'd have to calculate the width of the real body and determine is it is the lower wick at least twice the length of the real body. That's a requirement for a hammer. It looks like it might not be quite long enough, but it is a bullish long lower wick. It has, let's see, where is the volume candlestick here? It has quite a little bit of a push from volume. The next candlestick has a bearish upper wick and very weak volume. This candlestick here, which is a bullish engulfing pattern but quite a small weak one, does have support from volume. So we're not seeing strength right at the low because it was a red candlestick, but the first bullish candlestick pattern we do see strength from volume and an increased range. So the, might be a little bit of enough strength in there for that low to be sustainable. I'm not as convinced as I would like to be if I had seen a bullish candlestick pattern in this position with push from volume. We don't see that. On balance volume giving us no signal at this time frame at this point. There was no bearish divergence between price and RSI at this important high and no bearish candlestick pattern either, although this could be a dark cloud cover. Again, I would have to calculate the length of this real body. Actually, no, I think I did do that. And it closed just under half the length of the real body here, so it's not a bearish candlestick pattern. Um, it looks like it's over half because of the scale. This is a log scale. But when you look at price distance travelled, which is what you use for the calculation, it isn't. ADX is declining, there's no clear trend, the DX lines are whipsawing and price has been moving sideways but with lower lows and lower highs, really slow downward movement. Stochastics neutral, ATR declining as price falls, there's some weakness there. Let's go back to the daily chart and we're going to have another look at this low. 
Off the slow, we have a bullish ham hammer candlestick pattern here, and this is a strong bullish engulfing candlestick pattern, but this is very, very weak in terms of volume. This bullish candlestick pattern has pushed from volume pushing price lower, but the hammer, the long lower wick, is bullish. So again, I'm not seeing the strength off the low that I would prefer to see for really good confidence that this low is sustainable. But has always already went over when I look at RSI and ADX in conjunction with these two lows, I am seeing quite a lot of bullishness here. I think the probability is actually quite high that VE chain has found a low and I think the probability is high enough for me to want to purchase a little bit of this today so that's what I'm going to do in a few hours time. Thank you so much for everyone for your support, thank you so much for watching if you managed to get to the end of this video I have a special announcement, I will be making my Learn Pure Elliott Wave video course on sale next week, 40% off the full listed price so you'll be able to get that for a special price next week and I'll announce that on this channel so that'll start Monday morning. Thank you so much for all your support and all of your engagement. Have a great weekend.